Sir Siegfried von Kohlenbach and his friend, Lady and Baroness Bredeine Gilchan, had entered and emerged victorious in the great contest to secure the crowns of the North Shield. The North Shield, which would shortly be a kingdom and have such things for the first time. Gold, perhaps, is this land oft times, but warmth from hearts such as theirs radiates ever for the North Shield's people, who are kin each to one another and to all those folk who wish to be counted part of our family and clan. As those who must later and first wear the mantles of North Shield's king and queen, it fell to them and their advisers to devise a system of reward and recognition for their folk. For such is the weight of law and tradition within our society that each newly raised kingdom shall have its own acknowledgments, as well as those peerages which all kingdoms share in common. Many systems were proposed, and not few were the themes considered, around which the North Shield's recognition and awards might be built. In the fullness of time, Siegfried and Bregai decided the legends and the myths of their people provide figures and imagery which, living already in our hearts, lend their significance and emotional impact to awards for the North Shield. In the fullness of time, Siegfried and Berdai ascended the stellar thrones, and they attended the Twelfth Night celebrations in the barony of Nordskogen in the year of our society XXXIX. For both of these things, I was present to bear witness. During their evening court at Twelfth Night, a person was summoned from outside the hall. During the wait, His Majesty graciously endeavored to entertain the populace and educate us. <clears throat> Quote, While we created the North Shield's award structure, we discussed centering all of our awards around a single image, one dear to me, and I think to all of you as well, Siegfried's mighty fist. And the king made the gesture which a young man uses to impress a lady with his arms muscles, but with a fist facing forward, and he grinned broadly. So did we. For instance, Siegfried's mighty fist of the arts and sciences! And he pumped his arm forward and back sharply once, and displayed fine royal teeth. And Siegfried's mighty fist of youth combat! Pump, grin, out and out joy! and say, for service, Siegfried's mighty fist of, and his people join in perfect unison with them, service, muscles and fist, grin. Yes, my people are smart. I knew you'd catch on. We all of us there in that court appreciated this lesson in our kingdom's early history and some behind-the-scenes conversations, and now you at home can too. And, of course, we appreciated laughter and shared merriment, Periodically, Siegfried Rex himself, in any lull, displayed his mighty fist and his equally mighty grin throughout the rest of the court, calling out Siegfried's mighty fist of, making the mighty fist gesture, and grinning broadly, just a bit madly in some cases. Enjoy the status of popular pastime. These things became a running joke throughout court and beyond. Joke only because the Mighty Fist was not chosen as award symbolism. And soon the running joke was running roughshod all over His Majesty. I did not notice what prompted this, but at one point Siegfried suddenly, suddenly burst out with, Okay, enough! It was a joke, people! At another, And nobody tell Branos, His Majesty middle at the time, about this. Brave King, I shall certainly not tell him. Even so, the seal for Siegfried's mighty fist continued unabated. A number of people, and the number was at least three, called out over the halls in, Darian, I think we need some pewter fist badges, and similar. And this merriment continued, even unto the evening revel at Master Owen and Lady Flory's stead. There, a good and holy pilgrim came to the door and shared with the earliest arrivals a song of her making, a song of Siegfried's mighty fist. The fire blazed warmer under a smoky sky. Later, when stories and song had passed twice round the rebel's hall, the pilgrim announced completion of her song and shared it with all. Thus, the pilgrim became our inspiration, and it was determined that we each should well, 
You hold this book in your hands now. This is the completely unofficial, absolutely unauthorized, totally unsanctioned, and never ever before disclosed to the powers that be, Siegfried von Kulmbach's Mighty Fist Filk Songbook. Fist printing. With the little badges that I did make. Signed this third day of March, Anno Societatis XXXIX, by the hand of the wrong and honorable Lord Guardian Cordell from the Barony of Carantrith Mar, North Shield. And here we have it. The first one, the first song that began this whole book. By Kudrun the Pilgrim. Copyright January 31st, 2005. The tune, Beep Beep, by the Playmates. It is titled Cantata and Fugue in A Minor for Bassoon and Tenor Slide Whistle. <laughs> That's the title. If you think that Ducere is a small Italian sweet, or think that Ministrare is a soup that's made of meat, or that Illuminare is a candle with a twist, you might receive the honor of Siegfried's mighty fist. The fist! The fist, Siegfried's mighty fist. If you are feeling lazy and you sleep through an event, your garb is patched, your arrows lost, your schlager slightly bent. You hold a shire office, your report is lost in the mist. You might deserve the honor of Siegfried's mighty fist. The fist, the fist, Siegfried's mighty fist. If you can bake a strudel, or make cappuccino hot, or serve a feast for hundreds from a tiny little pot, or kill a thousand foemen with one blow upon the list, you might escape the honor <laughs> of Siegfried's mighty fist. The fist, the fist, Siegfried's mighty fist. Yes, here's the one that started it all. Let's all give a big thank you to the CEO of Bardic Buddies Best breakfast cereal and trading card enterprises, Kutrum the Pilgrim.